breaking and entering a crime. Not if you were a forgetter here at Mind Job. Utilising cutting edge technology like our proprietary brain computer interface and memory manipulation, MindJob provides our dear customers a newly developed high end service. Artist Brain Recycling. Forgetter is a fascinating thought experiment on the topic of art, an exploration of a world in which artist minds can be given to newborns without the trauma that accompanied the artist's experiences. As such, I hope you don't mind a bit of a more open-ended discussion today around art and society. As always, a like and subscribe on the video and channel or Steam Curator list is a huge, huge help. Enjoy the video. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for having time. Uh, I'm sure this is super exciting for you to finally talk about the game now that you are uh, out. Did it, did it now actually release last week, uh, Early Access, or are you still working out on Kings? Uh, we're going to release in a few days. We're working on a mature content survey. We haven't done it before, so we didn't really do an okay job, and we have to catch up on that. So and how does it ready. feel to be? How yeah. does it feel to be so close to finally getting it out? It must be probably be <laughs> super exciting. Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess our game development cycle is like, relatively short compared to other games. Like we spend like ten months like on this game, but we are uh, like a super small team, and it's like a crazy journey, and it has been like a pretty insane uh, production hell. So um, we are pretty excited about like the release right now. Why? Yeah. Why production yes. hell? What? What? What is the problem? The production. Ah, uh, okay. So, so the, the team structure is basically just. Uh, Allison and I are uh, doing like the game and we have like uh, 13 like part-time freelancers like helping with like some graphic designers, sound designers, but like it's like a one hour 3D game. So like it's like super, it's like a crazy amount of production work in terms of like programming, like free modeling, stuff like that. So yeah. So a lot of, a lot of things that still needed to be done. So yeah, since you're basically nearing that now, so how are you feeling like? It's still 10 months, it's still a long time. Like, okay, not comparable to maybe uh, three year long development cycles, but still 10 months. So, how does it feel for you to mm. reach that finish line? Mm. Maybe mm. Oh, at first, yeah, I see because we didn't know about the material content survey stuff. So, I thought we would be out yesterday. And we have, um, at the same time, the art space here in Hong Kong is really interesting in us, and they did an exhibition around the game. So we replicated the game in a real art setting mm -hmm. and we have the opening last night, yeah. Uh, so it's, there are more or less a hundred people there and they played our game in a really creepily mm -hmm. decorated room. And mm -hmm. people are very nice and interested in the game. Uh, there were at a time lying in that game, like people are waiting to play or trying mm -hmm. to sneak at the person who was playing. So we feel really, I think, proud and yeah. excited because uh, it seems people like it. But at the same time, we are very curious and nervous about other people who's, who's kind enough to buy the game and then they don't know us at all and we don't know them at all. So yeah. that part is unknown. But that is yeah. so amazing. Yeah. You, you you had a, a whole place set up that was basically uh, with some, some uh, props from the game or what did you like the exhibition yeah so yeah so we are doing like a collaboration with like an art space in hong kong and basically uh they help us like to find uh two amazing uh, set de uh, set designers yeah um who like play, play the whole game and then extract some visual elements like from the game like the neurons on the wall yeah and the broken yeah. furniture like stuff like that and they translate those visual elements into like a physical set and then like um it's like a full room like it's like a hundred it's roughly like a hundred uh square meters 100 uh square feet yeah that's amazing where i'm like with like the props and stuff yeah. and then uh, there's like a laptop there that people can play the game in a pretty immersive setting so yeah with uh you you, you made that art game and i'm I, I i think i told you in the in the emails before i'm also um sort of busy with arts myself yeah like i'm building oh, a cool. network i'm building a network for young artists where we are selling their fine art prints and we are basically gonna start selling those at the end of april and i know awesome, wow. yeah, thank That's you sure. and i know that nobody who is uh doing something with art does that just out of you know fun there's always a deeper reason behind it or always a deeper connection mm -hmm. 
So you made an art game. So what's what's the reason you uh, came to the idea that you were you wanted to make this particular game? I think like uh, we have like several uh, different reasons. Um, so for me, like I'm like an artist who has been working with like video game and virtual reality for like roughly 10 years. And most of like my uh, previous works are like short experimental games like that work as like a game installation and stuff like that. And they were mostly shown in like galleries, art festivals and stuff like that. But then like one thing that I figure is like most art people who go to galleries like don't really know how to use like, a game controller or they're like not super familiar with, with like game culture and stuff like that. So for this project, like from my side, like one important motivation is like to really do like art experimental game in a slightly more polished like production quality and then push that to like a mainstream platform like Steam so we can interact with like players outside of like the art world and see what the feedback would be and also to figure out like a way to finance our next game projects like instead of just like relying on like art funding state funding uh, stuff like that mm -hmm. so what I, I saw the DSL connection uh, collection mm -hmm. mentioned a lot what, what's mm -hmm. the connection there mm -hmm. uh, the connection is I, I used to work, I still work. Oh, first question, <laughs> what is the DSL collection? Just okay. so everyone... So I work in the art curation business for a long time, and DSL collection uh, is a family collection that focuses on Chinese contemporary art. Mm. I met one of the family members, uh, Sylvain Levy, in an art exhibition two years ago in Shenzhen. And he's interested in showcase his collection to everyone who's interested in, and he doesn't have a physical space and he's not interested in having one. Previously, he has wor worked with a French, I think tech company. They built a small scale VR museum, but that was like eight years ago. So it was pretty pioneer at the time. And now this is before COVID-19. He's interested in pursuing that side of art, like combining with tech and to be more publicly accessible. And he was talking to me uh, to brainstorm some ideas to make this happen. But I'm a, like a video game addict. So I was half jokingly saying that, why don't you make it into a video game? It, it's more, for me, it's more interesting than a VR museum. And then, although he hasn't played a game, <laughs> at, at least till then, no, maybe a little. No, he knows two games. One is Cyberpunk 2077. The other is Forget Her. So that's his game literacy. And he's very bold mm -hmm. and experimental and he's on board. So we sit down and write some proposal and have some mm -hmm. rough ideas and it slowly developed into what it is now. That is super amazing. I mean, the if you read through the store page, um, Forget Her mm -hmm. still sounds like a game focused on on the story that you're telling, but it's basically an art exhibition in itself. Like the, the game contains so much art that it's like, especially mm -hmm. especially the, um, mm -hmm. the, the the pieces in the forest and at the end, the, the museum itself, uh, I could like, I could stand minutes yeah. in front of a video, uh, in front of a single picture and just look at it and let it soak in. As I said, I'm also mm -hmm. a bit of uh, <laughs> um, interested in art. So that is, uh, that certainly helped, but I think that is something that is really hard to sell for people. Like you probably want to sell the the experience, the, the game, like just get people interested in that topic. And it's, especially when you said like there was previous just a VR museum or like a VR showcase for these type of things. I think it's really hard to get people to look at art. Like, I think that's the kind of the point that I'm getting at here. Yeah. Because that's also what we are noticing here that, yeah, and this is a super cool idea to Put that oh, in yes. a video game. I think, yeah, we are happy. Yeah, I guess like that's like part of like the challenge of this project too. Because like for like a VR museum, like the narrative is pretty uh, straightforward, right? Like mm -hmm. it's like a museum of art in the virtual world. But like this, like we have to mix in like gameplay, the story, and to and the artwork, and not make like the showcase of art with too much of like yeah. a hard sell, but like to blend those artwork into like a narrative. We, we, yeah. we want to like trick people yeah. who may not be willing to go to a museum to go to a museum mm -hmm. unconsciously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty great idea actually. And mm -hmm. I hope that people are, like when they are looking at the artworks, they are making the connections at the, like some of the artworks are placed very strategically because you wanted to convey a certain 
uh, a certain mm. idea. Uh, the thing that st uh, stuck out to me the most um, was the picture in the forest with uh, the hand and the meat. Oh, mm. yeah. How we are basically all just consumables depending on like what how people are looking at us or how people are perceiving uh, humans in uh, based on mm. certain circumstances. And that fits so well with the topic of your game. Mm. Uh, that was amazing. I'm like so happy. <laughs> chef, yeah, yeah, chef's yeah. kiss, yeah, yeah. chef's kiss. That was that was a stroke of yeah. a stroke of genius. Uh, so how did you, yeah. um, how did you decide to, um, to go about the structure of it? Like you wanted to 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 get people uh, to experience a game, but you have never made a game before, I suppose. None of you. Ellen has. Yeah, I've made a few um, experimental games. Like before, mm. um, like like conceptual experimental games. So earlier, like 10 years ago, like I used a game engine called uh, Quest 3D. And then like I switched to uh, Unity and stuff. Mm. Um, yeah. But uh, this is like the uh, biggest scale project that mm. I've worked on, like in terms of gaming. So what mm. would you say, yeah. or how would you describe the theme of the game since we have danced around that a bit until now? Oh, the same because mm. I wrote the description mm. so many times. Mm. I think uh, right help? now yeah. the version we're going with, yeah, is a art destruction journey. Like you destroy art to clear memory ruins or traumatic memories, mm. so that you can increase human productivity and creativity in the future. I guess, like, like since we are like basically collaborating with like an art collector like for Paris, and we don't just like want to show the artworks, like we. Alison and I have learned like crazy journeys inside the art world for the past like 10, 15 years, right? So we blend in like a lot of our own personal stories, our own psychological journeys, are the artists like life into like this game. So it's not just about like an art game about artworks, but like the whole art, how artists feel like how the art mm. ecosystem, like affecting artists and stuff like that. Yeah, I think for me it's the same. Like, yeah. uh it's half consciously half unconsciously the story becomes like this because yeah. we i'm a writer so mm -hmm. i write about a lot of people's small stories and mm -hmm. then accumulates up to a point it includes professional artists mm -hmm. like ellen mm -hmm. or game designers or people who has nothing to do with mm -hmm. the field of art or the field of game but they work in between mm -hmm. they wouldn't be considered as professional artists or professional mm -hmm. game designer but actually their creativity is what they live on mm -hmm. so we hear tons of stories. Um, most of them are either crazy or a bit sad, but that's also make what they work on really great. Mm. So when I write the story, it just like with little pieces just coming together. Mm. It's most of them are, if you ask me, I probably would find some person that I based the story part on mm. and most, but uh, in general it's fictional because it's too extreme. It couldn't all happen onto one person. So, yeah. you just you just mentioned the idea of uh, artists needing to have experiences or like um, mm. ideas mm. to actually put that into the artwork. Mm. And what you are insinuating in the game a lot is uh, what happens when you take away those experiences and just put mm. that into younger children. Like parents are deciding, I want my children mm. to be the next great artist i'm gonna give him mm. those skills but that child is obviously never gonna have the experiences that the artist yeah, yeah, exactly. uh, made and i was actually really curious if you were in the game uh, picking that up again like trying to actually um talk about what that might mean for the future but you left that open-ended in uh mm. for a purpose I suppose. yeah 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 um, but if we are talking about this, like, so. yeah. uh, but if we are talking about the, the, the implications of this now, like, what do you think that world will look like, like in three years, like, or after three years that the project started, do you still only have like young children that might have those skills and no background, but what do you think that world will look like in 20 years when all of the new artists will have that kind of, uh, genetic skill instead of experience yeah i think like ultimately like humans like a pretty human like are basically like animals like that based on 
on the experiences, right? Like it's like like we learn through experience, like and stuff like that. So I guess like one of like the big questions that we're like trying to ask through like setting this like backdrop of like mind drop is like what if we could bypass that, as you said, right? So I guess like for like the future, like if like humans can create without experience, like it's like really tricky, like for art, because like art is really about like personal experience, like and stuff like that. It might work for like math, like science, engineering, and stuff like that. But for art, I feel like my personal take is like the most touch experience is always about like personal expressions, mm -hmm. right? Like, and how can we do that without memories and experience? Um, yeah, that would be my take. Yeah. I'm very pessimistic because. Mm -hmm. uh, Part of my ground is in writing, in mm. journalism, and uh, for writing and journalistic works now is already under a lot of challenges. Mm. Like you produce massive amount of writings every day. Uh, no, nobody's going to write uh, read mm. it. But on the same at the same time, as a writer, it's impossible for you to write that many contents on a daily level. But you mm. have to, so you always are repeating or trying mm. to get something juicy in the end, like. At the readers and they are level of reception is very mm. high they want mm. something more juicy like more mm. exciting and there aren't so many things that's stimulating every day and you are not able to to feel yourself through that so the general anxiety comes not only in the business and the marketing but also now there's artificial intelligence who can write a hundred times faster than you and if they're a really good program maybe a casual reader wouldn't even mind uh, this is a very prevailing anxiety mm -hmm. in writing, I think. Uh, we don't have the answer. Uh, and some people would criticize if I think like that, I'm like technophobic. It could be, but mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine uh, a future like in our game, what that future would be. Maybe it would be mm -hmm. fine. Like, I guess Asian people would be worried if they have to live like us, but we turns out to be fine. It's just like another human race that we don't know yet. Yeah, that that's a good point. But actually, after after I finished the game, I was actually thinking about this a lot, because that would basically <laughs> no, no, it's absolutely true. I mean, that's the that's the thoughts that you put into the game with the writing. So yeah. obviously, since the topic is important to you, mm -hmm. that also came across in the game. And mm -hmm. like, I what I was thinking about a lot was the idea of uh, a world full of art, but without artists. Like basically, mm -hmm. you would have many pretty things but no meaning behind them or no people who would use um, oh, yeah. art as an outlet to criticize stuff, to improve stuff, to, uh, to, to point out issues. Like many of the artworks that you, that you put in the game are also about like, especially uh, for example, the meat, the, the meat, um, mm. artwork, um, they are also meant to point out issues. And if you don't have that anymore, like who is left like <laughs> politicians and normal joe people who would rather want to watch soccer games than talk about uh, big societal issues so that was yeah. really something that got me thinking a lot like what happened to the mm -hmm. world if those type of critical people would not exist anymore like we would have breed them bred them out of society i i agree and also i think you you know it already mm. like art or and like literature anything of creative energy it needs a system to support it it's not the only the only one who's making it it's not the, mm. only the artists or the writers like you need people to take care of them or do something like you do you need to support the mm. artists with your own strategies or mm -hmm. specialties and then there would be readers or players who would appreciate like many people put mm. so much heart and souls in this and so it's it's a collective effort unconsciously in a mm. way like you put so much of yourself into it yourself is plural form yourself in it so it becomes more valuable maybe than it was born yeah so so it's a process mm. and it's accumulated asset and it needs a lot of care and attention so <laughs> basically since we talked a bit more critical about like journalism and people not going to museums and stuff do you think that it, all hope is lost? Like, what do we need to do to get people to actually want to engage with those topics? I'm I'm actually like not that pessimistic. Like, I think like we will figure out like a way. I think like creative stuff, like 
like inventions, like art, all that kind of stuff is like so crucial, like the human beings, like in our civilizations. Like I don't think like we will mm-hmm. lose that. Like we just have to figure out like another way to like experience it. And then like over like, the past two years, because of like COVID and stuff, like mm-hmm. there's like a lot of like super radical changes. And I think like we are in this phase of like exploring like mm-hmm. new ways to like experience creative stuff, art stuff, which is pretty exciting. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I think like this kind of like the radical change is also um, how we also get like the art collectors to like, fund like mm. the project as well. So like it brings a lot of like new funding opportunities for artists, new way like, to think about doing games, doing arts stuff. So mm. I'm pretty positive about this. Like, I think so too. I yeah. think uh, the system of art itself has some responsibility mm. uh, to the dire situation we're in now. Mm. But COVID-19, yeah, especially put them mm. like they have to face the music. Like, there is mm. a dress job of visitors to museums last year everywhere, mm. and online visits arises, but still cannot competing with other video audio forms. Mm. Uh, so they have to now they have to face mm. this reality. They have to think of ways to yeah. make their collections more accessible and also interesting to everyone. And I think. Every museum is trying very hard now. Some of them are doing online exhibitions or uh, virtual museums, uh, 3D mm. scanned database for people to, to uh, also all kinds of campaigns. Like they would send their digital copies of the assets into Animal Crossing mm. and people actually like it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's yeah, I think actually... like in, in general, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Mm. No, please continue. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I just like to add one sentence. It's like, I think like we, we, I really like art, but like the art industry is like not particularly like a progressive like industry in the past few decades. So I think like it needs to be pushed. And I think like COVID is like a pretty cool push for that. Oh, I actually uh, love the positive attitude uh, on that from both of you, because I agree that uh, some industries have just been very slow to adapt to new mediums. Um, mm-hmm. So I love that we are seeing some change, even though it uh, obviously uh, hurts a little that uh, since you yeah, just mentioned COVID, course. some yeah. artists are obviously not dealing particularly well with uh, less funding mm-hmm. opportunities, yes, 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 yeah, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But yeah, yeah. I absolutely, absolutely agree. Those are opportunities. We just need to find new ways. There are always new ways. Yeah. And I thank you so, so much for doing what you're doing. Uh, for for, no, uh, no, 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 for no, like, putting out this game yeah. and trying exactly that to try find a new idea a new medium to get people invested in what contemporary art can be. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Super happy like how to hear this like oh. yeah. Since we just came out of the area with the with the uh, with the woods. Um, I really mm-hmm. love the idea how you try to like, I, I suppose you know the game Psychonauts. Yeah, because I was thinking a lot about Psychonauts when when I played the game, like the idea of di- diving into someone's mind and getting the idea mm-hmm. of what that mm-hmm. person might have experienced or what his mind palace looks like. And you really, yeah, yeah, yeah. you really did that well in this area, so like with the with the experiences of the father. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what what are the what is the visual element of these of these roots uh, representing? I was thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, the roots are supposed to be like the neurons like inside someone's mind, and um, since at the beginning of the story, like the character talks about his uh, his like pressure like from his like father and stuff. So it's like pretty like a childhood trauma. So we want to make this kind of like red neurons like. Before you break this, like red, like so, it's like it feels like more scary, like more traumatic. Intensive. Yeah, and like the indoor environment, it's like it feels like very uh, suppressed. So mm. yeah, so these are like the spatial design element. And then once you like break the father, then the space would like turn white. So it's kind of like I erase like the uh, traumatic memories like in this part of your yeah. mind. So yeah, I, I I also couldn't stop looking at every single artwork you put in the game. <laughs> so yeah. we might we might see a few moments where I'm just uh, standing and uh, oogling mm. at the artwork. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so this is an um, actually it's a video art, and we screen capture them ah. and put them into frames. It's by a Chinese contemporary artist. His name is Sun Xun. 
his work has a lot to do with uh, cultural revolution. So this series of work is him doing a PPT, flipping through newspapers uh, during the Cultural Revolution age. And then he would draw some human figure on it. So it's a little animation. If you flip mm. it fast enough, there's a human walking on these papers. So it's like human and time, especially a traumatic political time was left. We put it here because in the story, the father figure of the artist Alex uh, spent his youth time mostly through Cultural Revolution. And he's a very tiny figure in the entire Chinese modern history, but he suffered from it like most of the people at the time. And uh, the story came from a very close friend of mine, and he's always talking about his father, his father's unfulfilled um, dream about becoming a musician. But because of all this class struggle and society, like society's these turbulent years, he couldn't really finish it. So his father was learning flute by himself and also reading a lot of French literature. So we made these fake mm -hmm. French novels, Chinese edition book covers. And that's what you see in this uh, doll, what's it called, hallway. Mm -hmm. It was actually really funny because I was looking at all the book covers and I was, uh, I was deciding which book cover to choose to smack the dad with. <laughs> 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 yeah and this is the kitchen right oh yeah. no this is like a parents bedroom oh the parents bedroom yeah do these rooms especially um, in this first area have different different uh yeah. reasons different themes of what they what you tried to convey yeah so um right yeah so like um you can see like the a uh, few point of the player is pretty low because uh, we are experiencing like the childhood memories. So like mm -hmm. we are seeing these spaces like from like a like a kid like Baby kind Alex, of like a yeah. few point. Um, and so like this room like tells like the stories of the parents. So this room is supposed to be like the parents' like bedroom where like they tell about like the memories of the father's like first love, which is um, not his wife and um, how his father wants to be like a musician, but like failed yeah. and stuff like that. And um, we wanted to try our best to mm. represent the mm. uh, 1980s or 1990s mm. Chinese average person's household. Mm. So the furnitures are very simple. And we have some 3D models that's like the uh, mm -hmm. window frame yeah. Uh, we modeled it as after like the 1980s or 1990s home furniture, and the photos you see are from my family members. They are yeah. my parents' wedding photos. <laughs> yeah, we try to make. Yeah, we try to make the a window frame, uh, for authentic to like the uh, frames in China's like at that time. Mm. What are your parents oh, yeah. saying about being used in the video game? Uh, I think they're happy and the. Mm. There's another photo of a pretty young woman. That's my uncle's wife. She's really <laughs> happy because she's known for being pretty when she was mm. young. Oh, that is adorable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually meant to ask her: Are there any any online uh, repositories where one can look at the art pieces again outside of the game? Because I don't yes. want to play the whole game again <laughs> just to look at the <laughs> the artworks. Yeah. 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 Uh, DSL has a whole PDF. Uh, they have 300, more than mm. 300 artworks. We only choose more than 30 from it. So it's very, uh, a very complete catalog of everything. Oh, what, is, is that a website? Because you said an app, I could, didn't understand you properly. Uh, it's a website, and but in it is a, it's some kind of book app and you can watch video and also listen to music in it. Okay. Yeah, he can send you click a link. Yeah, yeah, yeah please, yeah. please do, please do. I would love to look through them. He was too poor to get a yeah, yeah. Not red enough to get into any art uh, I'm probably not the mm -hmm. only person who, who uh, felt some physical pain when smashing artworks. Mm. Yeah, we heard that from some play tests, mm. but some people uh, really like to smash art, mm. <laughs> especially artists. Especially artists, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we are actually like in, inspired by this, um, like this kind of like spaces in America called uh, the Rage Room, where you pay like a fee and you go into like a room and break everything for like like a fixed amount of time. Mm. 
So we employ that as like the gameplay mechanic combined with like kind of like a walking simulator genre. Mm. Um, the, because like in the beginning, like we kind of want to make like a walking simulator for storytelling, but we also want like more interesting actions mm. and stuff. So we combine these two like interactions to make this game. Mm. I was fine with smashing, with smashing the washing machine and kitchen and beds, but like smashing the artworks and the and the and the the, the paintings was painful. <laughs> oh, most people have uh, struggled to to smash the humans, mm. especially when they know that's a father. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure what that says about me that I didn't care too much. <laughs> <laughs> but also, some people enjoy killing fathers. So. Mm, yeah, that, that's that's not that's not entirely what I meant, but <laughs> yeah. there's always like a barrier for me, like especially with these high high art artworks. Uh, that oh uh, wow, uh, yeah. Um, I actually but again. Um, yeah, sorry. Please continue. Mm, uh, uh, the digital copies, the originals are safe somewhere. <laughs> uh. I actually wasn't like I was really wondering why the viewpoint was so low, and I didn't understand it when playing the game that this was the view as a child. I actually wanted to write you feedback that I was wondering why the viewpoint was so low because I wanted to uh, stand yeah. up all the time, but yeah, I totally didn't didn't get it. Yeah, maybe like from like a design standpoint, we should explain that like more in the game, like to make it more explicit. Mm. I mean, maybe you don't need to. Or maybe it was just me being stupid. I mean, that happens sometimes. Sometimes. No, 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 no. Like we it's got some. Feedback, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, actually, other people were commenting on that as well. Yeah, we got one or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we. Yeah, got feedback from playtesters. And stuff. Yeah, playtesters are funny. Yeah. <laughs> the imagined ways of playing a game that we haven't expected, so we have all kinds of. Yeah. fix we have to do probably already helps if you put the smaller perspective directly in front of children's like in this case um oh. i saw the children's toys and i was immediately thinking of the game like this is the hideout for for a child and i found yeah. myself in the in the environment that made me think of me as a child but mm. the first moment when you are small and you are just in that in that room uh i mm. forgot which one it was the kitchen which one was the first one yeah uh, I had no, I had no, no reference. context, yeah, no reference yeah. of me being a yeah. child. Yeah, That's yeah, a good idea, yeah. Yeah, this is something to learn. Oh yeah, yeah this really was also like... this was might have been also a bug. Like I try, I think I tried to smash the painting and I couldn't. Like, what happens in this area if you if you don't smash the paintings? Like, you can't pick them up, right? Yeah, you have to use the toy to break the painting. So what if I break all the toys but not the paintings? <laughs> uh yeah like from like the uh, from like the system standpoint like as long as you break like the final um at the ball of like the painting mm -hmm. you're fine yeah how uh, you're fine ah okay yeah so yeah so like in each like scene like we try to make sure you like the player out. like can always get out like and not being stuck and stuff yeah, we, because we did have one play test where the girl smashed everything and he, she stayed with the yeah, father. Yeah. And in reality, she has a very crappy relationship with her father, so mm -hmm. she's pretty scared there. Uh, what made you come up with the idea of the vacuum cleaner? Because the, um, the whole game would have worked with just smashing, but I feel like there's yeah. there's a, there's an idea behind that. Yeah, we think like breaking is cool, but like seems like the high concept is like to clean the artist's mind, right? So one of like the metaphor that uh, we use in in the beginning research uh, phase is like this, like going to like a dirty abandoned house and then repaint the wall and remove the trash and, and make it clean, right? Mm. Like the only difference is that uh, we are trying to do it in an artist's mind. Yeah. So like vacuuming, like vacuum, it is deeply really, like relates a lot to like cleaning and like vacuum also is also like a pretty a smoothing, mm. soothing like experience to people. So we did some play test with early prototype and people seem to like it. Yeah. And so we like kept it. Yeah, I actually tried to, yeah, sorry. 
Uh, at the beginning, vacuuming it was more difficult than it,、mm. it is now.、Mm. But people still spend a lot of time、mm. trying to find all the debris. At the beginning, it won't just fly to you. You have to find it. Yeah. And I did ask a lot of the players why do they do that.、Mm. They said because it's very cure like therapeutic. Yeah, yeah. Therapeutic. yeah. Yeah. I had the same. I had, I had the same feeling. That's also why I did it for every area except the the rocks. Yeah. It's not- <laughs> Yeah, I guess like from like a interaction design standpoint, like both like smashing and like vacuuming are pretty like therapeutic, and、um, and I think like it can be a cool experience, like you listening to someone's stories and doing like therapeutic interactions stuff. So what?、Uh, like since you said that you would like to make、uh, more games,、uh, hopefully you can get the financing. Do you already have an idea what your next project would like to would want to be, you would want to be? Um, well,、uh, we actually don't have any solid idea yet. But like, what I was talking about is just like a general、yeah. idea of like, so for artists to make installation, it's always like、uh, are relying on like like art funding, government funding, and stuff like that, which are usually a, a pretty small funding. Very slow. Yeah,、process. and it is it, it, it takes like. Like nine months to a year, like just to secure like the application stuff like that. But what we try to do to interact with the game world is like to explore how we can interact with like the gamers, how we can interact with like Steam to explore like new financial model for、mm. potential next project. And like from this project, from the feedback of like players, we can also learn more about like、yeah. what the nature of the next project like should be. Like what's how long should the game be, or like what kind of interactions.、Mm. And stuff like that because then we also heard like a lot of people like are not into walking simulators because they can just watch like a YouTube videos right like there's no point、like、in、one. interacting like for this one like that's why it's like we add like more fun interactions like smashing and vacuuming、yeah. stuff although like it's still like a bit like a simplistic but、mm. um it's some of our efforts like to try and experiment、mm. oh I absolutely understand that that's also the reason why I will cut the video after the The first area probably is somewhat into the woods, so we don't show、uh, too much of it because that's definitely an issue people are having. That especially with the shorter games, they are just an hour.、Uh, mm. They just watch a video and then be done with it. Yeah, 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 exactly.、Um, what I I think I didn't find the information on that actually. What is the the, the cost of the the early access version? Ah,、uh, the early access. Which country are you in right now? <laughs> Germany. Ah, okay. But actually, to, you can I, you can just tell me the US price and like the dollar price yeah, just to、so、get、uh, a basic idea. Six nine nine. I was guessing you are German, but I I wasn't sure. <laughs>、uh, sorry, what was the price? I didn't understand. Six nine nine. Six ninety nine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and、uh, US dollars. Where in Germany are you in right now? <laughs>、uh, Saxony, Chemnitz. Ah,、oh. oh, okay.、Uh, Which city? Chemnitz. Okay. Um, nice. We actually have not a huge art scene in our city, so I'm actually、mm. part of of a relatively small group of people who try to push for、uh, the the wider recognition of、uh, especially contemporary art.、Mm. Oh wow! So that is that is a bit of a pain because other cities have have like art universities,、uh, colleges,、mm. and whatnot, and we have none of that, so it's a bit. Oh really? Oh,、uh, yeah. It's probably Maybe, easier in Hong Kong. You can build a fake art college. That's the <laughs> best kind of art college.、Uh, since we just saw the the the、mm. uh, the next area here in the woods,、mm. uh, like the the dis- difference between the the house area and the woods area was super stark to me, and it also felt like、mm. you wanted to again convey a different. Area,、mm. a different time, a different feeling. Like, what was the、yes. the idea behind those two, the difference? Yeah, I guess like this, like for the indoor spaces, like mostly like the characters, like the childhood and like the t- teenage like space,、mm. um, childhood and like teenage memories, like which are more suppressed and like there's like more interactions with like、uh, parents and stuff like that, so it's more suppressed, like. And then into like, the forest is like more wide and open and more explorative, and it's more about like the characters getting into like college, and then like start to like really explore himself, like what he should do in life. Like should he like switch the major? Should he、uh, go against like his father's will 
of him to be like a musician and stuff like that. So like mm. like the narrative in terms of like more self exploration goes with like the gameplay mm. or like the game space more about like slightly more open and wide and mm. you can you have more space to walk around mm. stuff like that. In terms of the story, at this point, the father is already. Dead mm -hmm. uh, in the artist's memory and also in the artist's lived life. Mm -hmm. So as a person, he has more freedom mm -hmm. uh, to live through his adulthood. And also the first part we just went through is a bit linear. Mm -hmm. And Ellen was suggesting at the time like we can do a more mm -hmm. open and vague. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, basically we would, uh, I would sort of uh, let the video uh, come to a close now. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you very, very much. I loved having the discussion with you around the game, around art. Same here. Yeah, same here. Like, it's like so cool to talk to art people um, about like games and stuff. Mm. It's very refreshing. Uh, and I absolutely love how you actually, like what we talked in the beginning, that you put it into a new medium to to show these ideas and it's not just a visual room of art but people like me would still obviously stand in front of uh, the mm. artworks in the game and just look at them for ages so i'm very happy that you will send me the link remember to send me the link of the dsl collection of yeah. course of course yeah <laughs> so yeah thank you thank you thank you very much uh, thank you for making the game i wish you all the success i hope you can make uh, many more of these experiences and i hope yeah, other people you. will uh, check out the other areas of the game that I haven't shown in the video yet. Yeah, thank you so much, Thanks. like for having us. Like, yeah, it's like super fun to talk. Yeah, I'm spending so much time on this. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, then, All right, see you around. Mm. All right, see you. Thank you. <laughs>